In this video, we're going to talk about voltage and Kirchhoff's voltage law and their relationship to electromagnetic fields. Now, this stuff is all derived from Faraday's law. which is that the integral of the electric field around a closed loop is equal to minus the time derivative of the magnetic flux through that loop. But here's the thing. In the particular case of voltage and Kirchhoff's voltage law, we're talking about the static situation. And when it is static, that means nothing's time varying. So this whole side of the equation goes to zero. So we're looking at the situation where the integral of the electric field around a closed loop is equal to zero because this is static. <clears throat> this is also a condition uh, that informs us that the electric field is conservative. Meaning that it doesn't matter what, um, if you're trying to do a line integral of the electric field from some point A to some point B, it doesn't matter what path you take to get from A to B, you still get the same result. So cool, because Faraday's law has this time derivative in it, and we're looking at the static situation, we have learned that in, the elect in, in static situations, the electric field is conservative. What that tells us is conservative fields could be the gradient of something. because this is a, a true fact about anything that's the gradient of some scalar quantity has this property of conservativeness. So let's think about what the electric field might be the gradient of. We're going to look at work. If in general, if you're doing some work, the work that you are doing with some force between points A and B, is the integral of that force dot dl. OK, so for an electric field, then the force due to that electric field is the charge times the electric field. Cool. The force of the field on the charge. If you want to move some charge uh, within the field, right, against the force that's being exerted on the charge by the field, then the work to move the charge, well, sorry, the force to move the charge is minus the charge times the electric field because you're opposing the force that's being exerted by the electric field. And if you are moving a charge within an electric field from some point A to some point B, you do an amount of work. And that amount of work is minus the charge times the electric field dot dl integrated from your starting point to your ending point. You can move the charge out to the beginning, so you end up with something like this, minus q times the integral of a to b from a to b of e dot dl. All right, so it takes plus w work to move that charge against the electric field from A to B. So what if we wanted to know this more generally for some arbitrary value of Q? We can define a voltage, an electric potential energy. Well, it's an electric potential, but it's not an energy because we're going to divide by charge. Um, so the voltage between point B and point A is this work, which is also between point B and point A, divided by the charge. So that would give us minus the integral of 
E dot DL, so a path integral of the electric field from point A to point B. This is what we know of as voltage. But it's also more general than voltage, because it can be defined at any point, um, at every position, it always has a value. There's some key things to note about voltage. One, it's a scalar. Next, the dot product in this integral is important. It's not just multiplying the electric field magnitude by the length because it really matters that the electric field has some orientation with respect to DL. If, for instance, my electric field points this way, but I am moving my charge that way, I'm not doing any change in voltage. Lastly, voltage is defined between two points. So you can't just have a voltage at B. It has to be a voltage at B that is relative to point A or to some other position. Sometimes when there's no other obvious place to define our voltage relative to, we'll define it at infinity as our reference voltage point, but we always have to have something that it's um, relative to. Last thing, what if we take the gradient of the voltage? Then we're taking the gradient of this integral of E dot DL, right? Because of some definitional properties of gradients, uh, it works out that the electric field is minus the gradient of the voltage. It's just another statement of the same property here. I think I said this before, but um, this property of the electric field being conservative means that this voltage integral that we're talking about here is path independent. It doesn't matter what path we take to get from A to B. As long as we get from A to B, we get the same voltage result. Kirchhoff's voltage law is a consequence of this definition of the voltage. What we mean is, if I have some circuit here, I'm going to draw just a regular circuit with a resistor in it. It's got some source voltage on this side, and it's got some, let's say, a resistor on the other side with the voltage across it that I'm going to say is VL, where L is for load. Those electric fields in general point from the plus sign on the voltage to the minus sign on the voltage, so this can be the electric field on the source side. And this can be the electric field on the load side. And if I do, if I choose some point, let's make it be A, and we, I had do the closed loop integral around this circuit. Remember that a closed loop al always has to have a direction defined, so I'm going to define it this way, like that. And I do this of E dot DL. Then what I'm going to get is DL is pointing up on this side, so I'm going to get, oh, and I have to have a minus sign. And I'm going to say that that's equal to zero because it is, that's our property that we're using. The first thing that I'm going to get is minus integral of ES dot DL. And these are oppositely directed. So this works out to minus 
magnitude of ES times DL without the vectors. Um, then I'm going to integrate along this wire, but the wire is a conductor. It's a short, so there's no voltage on it and there's no electric field on it. So we're going to do integral of 0 dot DL because there's no field there. Then I'm going to come to this load and I'm going to have an integral. This time DL and the electric field in the resistor are co-directed. So I'm going to have minus integral of magnitude of EL times DL like that. And then I'm going to have another section that's zero due to the wire along the bottom of the circuit. So that's plus another integral of zero dot DL. So what we end up with is this first term becomes plus Vs, because we've got this minus sign that we obtain from the oppositely directed vectors and this other minus sign that we get from the definition. And over here, we don't get a minus, uh oh, we don't get a minus sign from oppositely directed vectors because the directors are co the vectors are co-directed, but we still have the minus sign from the definition. So we have plus Vs plus zero for the wire on the top minus VL plus another zero for the wire on the bottom equals zero from our Faraday's law definition. And that means that we get VS plus, sorry, VS minus VL is equal to zero. That's Kirchhoff's voltage law. It's a consequence of this fact that in static conditions, the electric field is a conservative field.